Welcome back, guys, to episode 24 of Browns Film Breakdown. We've been away for a little bit, uh, but myself and my now colleague at Browns Film Breakdown, I'm excited Brendan's jumped on to give his expertise. Also, obviously, you guys know he does great work at Pro Football Focus. Um, but yeah, Brendan and I are jumping back on to talk about the big news of the day, which is Freddie Kitchens hiring as the Browns now head coach. And we wanted to look at some of his vertical passing game in week 17. So, Brendan, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. Excited about the news. How about yourself? I'm with you. I'm excited. I think it's going to be a good fit. As far as we know, we never really know with these guys, but I think he's the best hire we could have possibly uh, hoped for in this situation. So, um, yeah, man, I think, I, think it, I think for everything we could hope for and keeping the, the winning vibes going and the positivity in the franchise, it, it's, it's something I feel good about. How do you feel? I feel really good about it. I thought that he was the best fit for the long term uh, when you take into account everything as far as the head coach GM dynamic, the head coach quarterback dynamic, um, you know, weighing what he did versus what Greg Williams did, for example, and then also the other candidates that are, were available. I just thought that with what he did with the offense and the way that offensive coaches are typically the big time uh, head coach candidates, I think it made sense to make him the head coach rather than just keeping him as an OC, um, seeing him leave in a year from now maybe when he's still a hot head coaching candidate and then you lose him. I just thought that was a huge risk. So I feel like it's worth the risk to take um, take the chance on him now and hire him as the head coach and just give him all that support and let him learn on the job. I'm with it. I echo it uh, as, as, as much in agreement as I possibly can. And, and let's, yeah, let's dive in and look at why we agree with it. I think the Browns did a really nice job week 17 of putting Ravens coverage in conflict. So as I draw up what the route concept will be, uh, walk me through what the coverage is on this one, if you can, Brendan. Yeah, so on this, the middle of the field is open. So we're going to see two high from the safeties. Um, at the top, the corner is showing press. And then at the bottom, the corner is off. And then it looks like we have, you know, you never know what it's going to be post-snap, but just pre-snap, it looks like three linebackers underneath. And they're kind of showing a variation of quarters coverage, I would say, some type of a trips check or, in this, in this case, a quads check. Yep, right. So we're going to get a down corner there. Yep. And then you made a good point of rolling. And then um, you said on the backside we were going to get half, right? So he's going half. Yeah. I think that's what it turns into. Pre-snap, I would say they're showing quarters, but then it turns into um, post-snap, as we'll see. It turns into more of a quarter, quarter, half type coverage. But I think the quads kind of make it look different than it would otherwise because, uh, as we'll see, the safety to the top, if you just uh, roll it, yeah. So he has eyes on number four vertical. So he's really, really nosy on that. The corner drops off. He, he would typically have the flat, but since he has no flat threat, he just continues to sink when the receiver goes inside and he tries to get under that crossing route by Najoku. Um, Mayfield does a fantastic job of anticipating the, the safety at the bottom, what he's doing. Uh, he has eyes on the dig route and he's kind of getting nosy on that. And Mayfield knows that with Perryman's speed that that safety is not going to be able to get out of his back pedal and cover the post route. And Mayfield, as we can see now, he's, he's ripping this ball with Perryman, even with the nickel defender and uh, five yards away from the safety. So that's just really impressive. And he probably saw in film study that Jefferson was slow out of his back pedal in this situation. Absolutely. Um, some, some good minds have noted that the Chargers ran a very similar motion backfield um, four by one quad set vertical package just like this. They just missed it due to pressure. So, um, yeah, I would imagine Freddie and uh, Baker saw this play, liked what they, uh, the matchup they could get. Obviously, week five, they ran a very similar scheme with a dig right in front of Jefferson's eyes. You guys will see Jefferson right here at the top of the screen. This view doesn't give us a great picture, but um, we can see at least sort of here at the top the dig that comes into this window and how that dig affects Jefferson's eyes and allows Perriman to get open right behind him for a touchdown. So a really fun scheme uh, that the Browns scored their first touchdown on, right? So another concept, we're in the third quarter now. The Browns go into halftime down 20-7. to seven. This is their first possession. So the Browns decide to, in some form or fashion here, they're going to get quad. This is the play you guys probably remember as the uh, jet motion fake with, the, with Mayfield doing the little pitch fake 
uh, selling that same pitch action that they used the week before against Cincinnati, and it was really nice. But they did eventually get to quads, right, Brendan? So let's kind of play it here for just a second. And right here it morphs into quads because you have your back coming over. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk coverage first. Yeah, so pre-snap they show a closed middle of the field. So talk, yeah, have, talk, talk to the folks about what closed means just real yeah. quick. Yeah, so single high safety. So he's closing off the middle of the field by lining mm-hmm. up there. So um, any type of like crossing route, he should be able to cover it. Um, but the way that you attack typically single high is you would go up the seams because it would put stress on that single high safety. Um, whereas if the middle of the field is open, then that means you have two safeties deep or no safeties deep. And that means that you can run those crossing routes over the deep middle of the field. And in theory, seams should be covered if it's too high, but then you would adjust those routes and be able to run crossers over the middle. So yeah, it's just closed versus open. And here they show closed, but then it turns into open post snap because the safety at the top of the screen drops out. Yep. So there you get the open look, right? Yep, um, exactly. and, and again, you have, I think this is Jefferson again, where there's an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they get, they get 25 here, uh, to, to uh, help me out. What's his name? You mentioned it just a bit earlier. We we're talking Tavon Young. Is that his Tavon name? Tavon Young. It is Tavon Young. Yep. Get him to hop out just for a split second and avoid getting any yep. hands on. Right. His eyes in the backfield. Yep. Yep. And that makes a difference. Um, and yeah, and then all of a sudden you have Jefferson who's, who's getting caught chasing threes vertical here. And, and um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's an easy throw and catch, right? And, uh, yeah. I think, I think, uh, yeah. Motioning from three by two empty to four by one empty in the situation. I think it really messed them up. I think they had something called initially that wasn't going to necessarily rotate to too high. And whenever the motion went across the formation, that was when the safety dropped out and everybody had to adjust their coverage on the fly. I think the jet motion really messed with them here. And that was kind of what led to this coverage bust because clearly someone, messed up, whether it was Jefferson young, I mean, it's easy to assume that young probably did mess up, you know, based on especially the first clip where he did run with, with number two vertical, but, um, but still, uh, it's just I think this the extra stress put on them by the motion is what did it here. I'll agree. I think it does, and I think the Browns did a nice job of getting motion, whether whether truly pre snap and setting or using this jet motion to to take advantage of what was a flaw in the Ravens check against quads, right? So yep. um puts a lot yeah. of stress on communication Absolutely. just right before the snap. And that's really it's really difficult to communicate that with just a couple seconds before the ball is snapped and then the ball's in the air a couple seconds later. It's just, it puts a ton of stress on those safeties to get the, the calls right and get everybody lined up right. Yeah. And it almost, I mean, to get that sort of check, you guys, what you would need is your defense to have all 11 guys knowing, or at least the secondary knowing that they're checked to quads. It has to be nonverbal, right? It has to be, everybody knows it based on repping exactly. it all week. And, and yeah, so Browns did a nice job of taking advantage of it. And I give kitchens and Mayfield a ton of credit there. So we'll come back. We have one more, um, one more clip as well with the vertical concept. So the other vertical concept, the Browns were able to, um, you know, use for effectiveness and it was effective. It was just before halftime. It was a, a couple possessions before halftime. The Browns needed to answer and they got a really big play out of this concept here. It's, it's again, it's not, it's not quads, but they are running vertical concepts. So you'll see um, really three verticals, right? You're going to get Landry down here is number two. It's going to push a vertical. I believe this is – is this Callaway or Paramount? I'm not sure. I, I struggle with this. I think Callaway's at the top. So that's probably Paramount at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those guys are both landmark hitting, right? And, and, and Callaway – or sorry, and Landry is down the middle of the field. So he's kind of occupying deep middle and the Ravens bus covered. So let's walk through that. Yeah. So once again, they lined up in, in a middle of the field, close coverage. Uh, Weddle is in the deep middle. That's what they show pre-snap post-snap. They rotate. So they disguise the coverage here. So he rotates over and then the other safety at the top of the screen, you can see him sprinting out. So at the top of the screen, they're actually running a variation of, or on this play, I should say, they're running a variation of uh, quarter, quarter, half, or cover six, as some people would call it. So mm-hmm. at the top, 24 has that deep half. 
the corner is squatting, so he's covering the flat. You'll see him cover. Uh, you know, he tries to get hands on number one at the top, uh, get him toward the sideline as far as he can, be physical with him, and then he immediately comes down to cover the running back in the flat. And then at the at the bottom, uh, they're running. You know, that's quarters, and for some reason. Weddle gets nosy. I don't really know exactly what he's doing here, but um, he should have number two vertical here based on his, based on typical quarters rules. I mean, obviously we're, we're not in the Ravens meeting room. We don't know exactly what they were running here, but it, it definitely looks like quarter, quarter, half here. And uh, he's out of position and it leads to a coverage bust that could have easily been, if not a touchdown, definitely a 60, 70 yard gain. Yeah, and it would have been a big game for the Browns, unfortunately. And there's been some discussion about whether this ball is accurate. I, I mean, I, I just, I, I think it's a really accurate throw. This ball's got to be I caught. So. Could he have, could he have kept him in the middle of the field more, and made it easier, maybe? But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's not an easy ball to track, but it's, it certainly can't hit you in the face and bounce, bounce off your face. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, that was a good point about how he he could have probably led him a little bit more to the middle of the field. I think that something that can be tough for receivers is when they have to track a ball that's straight over their head rather than, you know, typically they're running down a sideline, tracking a deep, like a, a deep uh, fade route. And it's a lot easier to track a ball over your shoulder like that than it is to track a ball straight over your head. So it can be a challenge in the situation, but Landry's paid a lot of money to make this catch and it, it shouldn't have looked that bad. Um, I think it was an accurate throw by Mayfield and absolutely has to be caught. He could have, slowed down just a hair caught this ball over the shoulder and and made a huge play um they have to take advantage of the coverage bust in the situation i'm with you i think it it'll be um it'll be certainly interesting to see how the browns wide receiver groups look group looks next year uh, the, the the hiring of kitchens guys is going to provide us with pr- plenty of angles to look at off season film breakdown wise so just to keep you guys aware of the plan uh, any sort of coaching change that happens if the Browns bring in an offensive coordinator, we'll look at some film of what that offensive coordinator's history looks like. Uh, we're going to, I think, next week probably give you guys a look at the big contention with a defensive coordinator is a 4-3 or a 3-4 guy. So we're going to give you a picture of how those things blend and how it's blown out of proportion uh, to a certain extent. So we want to sort of clear that up so that there's not a hesitancy to who the Browns bring in, try to give you a holistic view of what that looks like. But we'll be doing draft pro, uh, sorry, draft prospects uh, will be a big thing we do over the next three or four months. And, um, you know, as the usual, I always let everybody know if you want something else specific, let either of us know. Let us know on the Browns film BDN handle. We would love to, uh, to, to be able to answer all of those questions. We have plenty of time to do so. So, let us know. We're going to be as engaged in this coaching staff search and engaged in prospect understanding and uh, free agency target and all that stuff. So, Brendan, thanks for joining me, man. And I really look forward to, uh, you know, what should be a fun offseason of Browns Film Breakdown, buddy. Definitely, man. I always enjoy it. And I'm glad to be on board. All right, man. Good, uh, good stuff, guys. We will be back next week. Like I said, until that point, go Browns.